We're going to go through five things to explain to you and give you an idea of what goes, this is my shot of, of what happens inside. This is a rotator cuff evulsion tear. This is my tear. There it is. There's the front of my ball. There's my supraspinatus coming in and it's ripped away. See that? So it's ripped clean away, just pulled off. What he's doing at the moment is he's, the, that's, where the, that's where the tendon was supposed to be. See the white bit? So that's where it's ripped off. That was the attachment and it's ripped off and put, retracted away. And that's a year's worth of retraction. So he's preparing the footprint because he's gonna pull that tendon and put it back on the bone but he needs to rough this up, it's like sandpaper. He's roughening it up to make it bleed through because he needs a moist sort of bleeding joint for the, for, to basically, it's like putting glue on. So when he puts that tendon down, the bleeding then heals the tendon and blends. So he has to roughen up the footprint. <laughs> yeah, it's a cutter and he's roughening it all up. So he's cutting away all the old supraspinatus foot that was there. Yep, and it sucks it away. So there's my, it's open, that's the ball, okay? Does that make sense? So that's preparing the footprint, and you saw that tear just sitting there. So the ball was there, and it was just sitting there like that. He's gonna pull it back on. Can you click the, oh, you did it already? Uh, the next one is anchor number one, I believe. Can you go to the next one? Now, before you do that, um, just to explain. So, and this is fascinating. So that's my ball. Here's the coming in here. He's underneath that tear, he's putting in a screw, and I call it a wall mate. And you go, you'll realize why I call it a you know, wall mate. Have you done jib rock putting things in the wall? Wall mate? He puts one in there with a with the the ropes that are gonna tie down, like a like tying down a tarpaulin on a trailer, the ropes. That goes in the bone underneath the supraspinatus that's come over top. And it comes up and he pokes it up through the supraspinatus, ties it off, and there's he's got something to pull, and he pulls it back down and then locks it into the bone again. So there's a, two anchors that go in. One, he's putting an anchor in the, in the tear and he's also reinforcing my other portion of my supraspinatus. So he puts an anchor in underneath the, the good part, pulls them up, takes them down, and crosses them over. So let's have a look at the first anchor. Uh, you have to go escape. And he's click on the next one, yep. Okay, so he lifts it out of the way, he's gonna go, that is a He's cutting a, he's chiseling in a hole to put in a wall mate. So that's drilling into the jib rock, taking it out, and in comes the wall mate. You ready? There it is, see? And he'll hit it in and then screw it in, so hit it in, and then this is where you see them on the, on the other part of the video where he's doing this. He's screwing that down into the bone underneath the supraspinatus, and you'll see when he takes that away, there's two things, it's got two ropes internally attached into it, look how deep that goes. It's about two and a half centimeters down, I think. And then he takes that away, there, see? So these has got something, and he pulls on it, see, make sure it's attached. So there's my supraspinatus T at the top, do you see that there, ready? Now go to the third one. So that was the anchor number one. Now, then he's got all these ropes, he's put this sort of, he's put them in. He's also got, you know when they have portals, you can see the other portal coming in the other side. While you're looking at that, can you see the pink stuff? See how it's all pink in the background? That's my capsule, that's capsulitis. He said, you know when everyone says that frozen shoulder is not real? Look at that capsule, it's supposed to be white. <coughs> the whole thing is pink and red and inflamed. The entire capsule, he went around and looked around, the whole joint, the whole thing goes, geez, you must have been in a bit of pain. He goes, yeah, it's pretty friggin' night, it hurt. I've got ice on it, he goes, oh, and I can see why. That whole thing is frozen and inflamed. Look at that pinky stuff going on there. So that's frozen shoulder inside a joint. Can you see how he's come up in there and now he's got the, that? He's got the rope now. And there's two different ropes. One's a blue, one's a white. Obviously they do different tensile strengths, that sort of thing. Can you see how he's pulled that tendon now back to the footprint? See, he's, pu he's pulling it back. 
So this is the, he's putting it back to meet onto here. So he pulls it back to the bone and then he's got to lock it down. Then he's tying knots so it's got a sort of, it doesn't slip out of that tendon. So when he pulls it back, it doesn't slip out. Is what I think I imagine is happening. So he does tie his little knots and things. This is microscopic, right? This is tiny stuff. And then you can really yank and pull it down. I was always fascinated how do they do that. So they come up the bo underneath, lock it off, and then come over. Do you want to go to the next one? Um, number four. And I'm pretty sure this is wall mate number two, or number one, number two. So you've got two strands crossing over now. And this is going on the edge, right on the sort of point of the edge of the ball there. See the roughening is done there, or the bleeding that's there too. And this is the fascinating wall mate. This is why, how do they anchor in ropes, how they anchor them into the bone. It goes through the loop in the wall mate. You watch it come in, it's very quick before it goes in. So he's made the hole. He puts the ropes through the wall, mate, at the tip. You'll see it come in, just watch carefully. It's coming in very shortly. There's the hole. Here comes the wall, mate. There it is there. See, it's in, see, it's in, see they've gone through the loop? See that? So they're through a hole. And then he puts that in. That's how they stay in, because it's through a sort of a loop in the hole. And then they screw it in, and it tightens it as it screws, because it's wrapped around. So as they screw, it's sort of, it's like a ratchet tie down. As the more, the more they screw, the more it locks it down. And it pulls that tendon down onto the bone and locks it into the bone. It is not pulling up. But that is what they're fearful of, is, there a, is either failure of the tendon ripping away from the um, rope or the thing coming out of the bone, I guess, or the rope snapping out of the bone. See, it's locked down in there now. And then he moves my arm around to make sure it's all intact. So that's one side, and then he has to do the other side. So he's locked down one side, and he's got to lock down the other side. So they basically put two. What's the next one? And then they did a bursect to me, and I didn't record that. There's the second one coming in. How they know is <laughs> fascinating how good they are, right? And it's great. You know, you think that's what's happened and you go, that's amazing. And it does feel like that straight after, trust me. It feels like someone's done that to you. But, uh, but funny when they pull it away, they take it out and they just snip off. It's obviously just got a, it's somehow they tie it down and they just come out and snip it off. See there, so you watch this thing here, there's the rope, and it's all tied down. And they just go and come in here and clip it off. There, snap, gone. Because it's all locked down into the bone. And then you have it, there it is moving around. So he's doing this. There it is, see that? Look how gross and frayed and red and horrible that looks in there. And there's no noises, right? It feels, feels great. But that's healing for you, right? There you go. That's what happened to my shoulder. Plus, then they went in under the roof, took out the bursa, sucked that out. It was like a big jellyfish and took all that out and chiseled out a chromoplasty in my roof, chiseled all that out. Then went in, screwed the bicep in, and then took that off. In 45 minutes. How long was the surgery? Three and a half. Okay. All right. It was a, because it was an avulsion tear, not an interstitial tendon tear. There was no recovery. In fact, it was only going to get worse. Stats are, it just gets worse. And um, I'd done a year's rehab. You guys know. I was getting nowhere. I was still not sleeping at week ten, at month 10. It was like, this is not good. Um, but I chose to have it. One of the other reasons is I chose to have it over Christmas. So I could have it, have some time off, and then recover through January. Thank God I got it done before COVID, right? Okay. So it's a big deal. Yes. 
Simon, Simon Tan. Simon Tan? Yeah. Awesome. Did my knee as well. Because he's a knee and shoulder surgeon. So I've seen him a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, helps to have a good surgeon like that. You know, the, if you've had, if you're a physio and you've had surgery from a surgeon, they're going to trust you with the rehab when you come back, you know, and then, you know, trust you with clients. There's a good relationship going on there. Um, so when you have a client that rolls in the door in the next month or so and they've had shoulder surgery, you can see what's going on. It hopefully it will give you an idea of why you have to be careful, why you stick to pros, why you hold them back, why you push them depending on what they've had. And my complication was frozen shoulder. Now, frozen shoulder, he said it's actually been a blessing in disguise. He's one of those surgeons who believes that frozen shoulder is nature's way of locking your shoulder down so it can heal and then it'll unfreeze and you haven't moved for so long because the damage was so bad that it needs to repair. He said, the fact that you had lost so much range and you couldn't do things stopped you doing silly stuff like that and tearing it or doing things because you know you had to guard it you had to go through all the processes of, of slowing yourself down and dealing with range of movement issues it took time and you said you went right past the 12 weeks and into 16 weeks you know at that point between 12 and 16 you've got sharpie fibers hitting in from the tendon into the bone and it's solid and it won't pull out whereas if you're hypermobile and you've got heaps of range you feel like there's no pain there you do more with it you are careless, yeah? Whereas I was very conservative. He said, you took longer, but mate, your outcome is gonna be so much better because your body is naturally trying to, you know, heal it and fuse it. And if you imagine like, this is what would have happened 300 years ago when there's no shoulder surgery, big traumas have frozen shoulder and they come and they might be fine. It'd be interesting to see, you know, if someone had someone like this, full shoulder lockdown and then they come out of it. Of course, mine's evolved and so it's not, never going to get better, but it's sort of nature's way, I guess, and designed to say, can you stop moving your shoulder? Why just repair this? And then, it, and that's, and then she throws the shoulder magically comes right again. Because it's almost the body lets go. It's like a time clock. Most shoulder, frozen shoulder people are left with dysfunction and capture restriction and winging scapula and all sorts of stuff that you need to sort out. Um, but it you know, does come right some of the time.